Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahol with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. We're outside today in the heat of summer, very humid out here, Thomas, so this will be a grind maybe to get through hitting some shots today. But uh, we have the Cobra King Utility Iron with us. This is new from Cobra. Uh, one of the big innovations here is that it is adjustable. It's got the Cobra MyFly adjustable hosel. Very unique for a utility iron. There's not many out there have this feature on them. So this will be fun to test today. We're gonna go through some settings, test them all out, and we're gonna see the performance and let you guys uh, see for yourself if it should be in your bag. So Thomas, before we get into it, what would you expect to see here? Uh, adjusting through the different settings and then just from the club head itself, what do you expect? I would expect when we make these adjustments, um, less loft on the golf club is going to maybe cause the ball to go a little further, a little more ball speed, yep. maybe fly a little lower trajectory. Yep. I'd expect more loft on the golf club, so when we put it up to the 1.5 plus 1.5 setting, yep. maybe a little bit higher ball flight, maybe a little steeper landing angle, maybe a little better stopping power essentially. Yep. Uh, maybe not go quite as far, but I think the carry distance might surprise us a little bit. Yeah, I know you've always been big on carry distance and how uh, that can be advantageous, even more of a factor. In it per se than total distance sometimes. So we'll get to see how that works. And we'll also see, you know, this hasn't been a test we've done very much with a, an adjustable utility iron. I don't think we've ever done a video on one of those. So this will be very interesting to see. I'm excited to see what we find out. Yeah, this is a good looking club. I'm really excited to test it. All right, Thomas, I know you don't play a utility iron necessarily with your Gamer 4 iron. So can you compare what you have in your hand with your Gamer? Yeah, so this King Utilities with standard settings got 22 and a half degrees. My Callaway X-Forge 4-iron has got 23 degrees, so it is half a degree weaker. Um, I'm also playing a slightly um, heavier and stiffer golf shaft than this one that we're testing today. Okay. So Cobra just sent us this guy. This is the KBS Money Taper Light stiff shaft. Okay. I play the Project X LZ 6.5, which is 125 okay. grams. So it's a little bit heavier than, than this guy here as well. So how would you um, expect the differences to be just before we hit any shots, standard settings, 22 and a half, 23 degrees, the difference there plus the difference in shafts, what do you expect, plus the difference in the head as well? So I always like to say fitting is always comes down to the club head first rather than the, the golf shaft first. So I'm probably not going to notice too much with regards to golf shaft. Yes, it's going to feel lighter, mm -hmm. the swing weight is going to feel a little bit lighter than mm -hmm. what I'm kind of used to there. Um, but usually when I fit, I try and fit the club head first. So the loft differences, half a degree, I wouldn't expect maybe too much. I expect this to go a little bit further yeah. um, at 22 and a half degrees. Now, this guy is adjustable. Yeah. So that's the unique thing about testing this today is the four irons got 22 and a half degrees in the standard setting. Just like the MyFly setting adjustability, you can go as high as 24 or as low as 21 with this. Mm -hmm. They also have a two iron and a three iron utility as well. Well, you can go as low as 16 degrees with the two iron that's yep. standard at 17 and a half. So plenty of adjustability. The less loft on a golf club, the further the ball is gonna go, the faster the ball speed, the lower the spin right. essentially. Okay, well yeah, let's hit some shots. And then as you mentioned, we're gonna get into some of the adjustable settings and maybe play around a little bit, see what the extremes are. Okay, maybe sounds good. Lowering the loft, also increasing the loft. All right, so we're starting first at the 22 and a half standard setting. Yep. yep. That was a nice swing. So now your first impressions looking down at the club. Obviously a little bit uh, thicker than your old four iron, but in terms of other utilities you've maybe tested and hit before, what do you think? Yeah, a little thicker than like a tr my traditional four iron is. Um, utility wise though, it looks pretty similar to other kind of utilities. You know, they've got a little bit more forgiveness in them. Sure. A little more juice maybe to go a little, little bit further there okay. as well. But yeah, it's a, it's a good looking club. It's, looks like it's got a lot of loft on it. I'm not used to playing a utility that's got 22 and a half degrees sure. loft. So when I look down, it definitely looks like it's got some loft. But maybe we'll, we'll notice some changes when I adjust the loft around. Yeah. That was nice. Nice high draw. Do like to make a little little adjustment when I need to. Got a average ball speed of 143 there. 
Uh, spin rate around 4,500. Carry was 220, and the total distance 233.9 on average there with those five shots. So, yep. Um, what did you think? And that was the standard settings. Um, everything just kind of out of the package. So as you would um, expect it right away. What do you think? Yeah, it was interesting that it was still spinning a decent amount, mm -hmm. um, still flying fairly, fairly high, and it could be a little related to the, the shaft a little bit, yeah. being a little lighter. Um, 4,500, you said, on average? Yeah. Usually around 4,000 is usually what I kind of like to see with a four irons. It's okay. not too far off, um, but it was carrying far. So it was still, you know, it was carrying, what, 220? Yeah. Uh, and stopping about 232, so it's stopping power essentially. Yeah. So for me, with the 22 and a half loft, degree loft, it's trying to fly a little higher, give me a little bit better chance to stop the ball mm -hmm. on the green when I have more loft on that golf club. So how does that compare to what your four iron in your gamer goes distance wise? Yeah, my four iron usually carry is about 215. Okay. So 215. So this is carry. gaining some distance. It's it gaining is, a little bit of distance. Right. And yep. it is built like you know, it's a more of a distance club than maybe your four iron. So yep. we should see a little bit of distance gain there, but yep. um, yeah, 220 carry, 233.9 was your total okay. distance. So some good numbers there. Uh, again, spins a little bit higher than maybe that you would higher than you would expect, um, but the stopping power is great. So if you're out there, you know, 230 away, you can land on the green and stop it on the green next to the hole. Ideally. Yeah. Yeah, um, it was forgiving. It felt like uh, it was pretty easy to hit. It didn't feel like it was very hard for me to hit it all for a four iron. So I do like that. Looking down at it, it gave me a little bit of confidence to know that I got a little forgiveness there. Um, the spin rate might be related a little to the golf ball. Keep in mind, we've got range balls here. Yeah. Um, we've got the normalization button on, but it's not perfect right. outside oh, using yeah. um, range balls essentially as opposed to using a more premium golf ball. Sure. So, yeah. Well, let's get into the fun part now. We'll do, test some adjustability here. This is, again, one of the very few utility irons out there on the market now that is adjustable in terms of a, a hosel that can be adjusted like a driver or a ferry would. So we're going to play around with that a little bit. Uh, we'll go, we'll start by decreasing the loft okay. here. We'll go uh, a degree and a half lower than standard and see what happens. Sounds good. Okay. Now it's adjusted to 21 degrees of loft. Yep. Got it on the minus 1.5 setting and 21. So. so we should expect a little bit lower launch, lower spin and lower ball flight here. Maybe more distance too. Yeah, I would expect a little more distance, a little less ball spin, uh, mm -hmm. maybe a little more ball speed. Okay. Ground and toe. So that was off the toe? A little toe, yeah. Well, I believe that was the fifth shot. Yeah. Your spin was lower there, which yep. is going to happen, I suppose, with... Slightly a toy. Yep. All right. Five shots now with the 21 degree setting now, yep. a degree and a half lower. Um, would you expect now, I, I know sometimes adjustability, you can also adjust the face angle. Does that apply to a utility iron here? I mean, yeah, when you're, keep in mind when you do this with woods, you're really not ch exactly changing the loft per se, you're changing the face angle around yeah. a little bit. Now normally if you put it down, you feel like you're kind of opening that face up a little bit. I didn't have a problem still kind of missing yeah. it less, so that's kind of interesting there. Um, the fact that I didn't, maybe it wasn't more, more fade biased, I would mm -hmm. expect it to be, but okay. once again, this golf shaft being a little light for me, and maybe the part of the reason why I was kind of missing a little bit left as sure. well. So. Sure. Well, we, as you know, we kind of predicted it before, but what would happen by adjusting the setting to a lower loft. Um, the spin dropped by 500 RPM. Your carry increased by about 11 yards. Your total distance increased by about 15 yards. Sure. So that's kind of what we would expect, right? Given lower loft and kind of from there, you're going to get more distance, a lower launch, etc. cetera. Yeah, ex as exactly what I would predict. Less the more, the more loft is on a golf club, the more it's going to spin. The less loft is going to spin a little bit less. Mm -hmm. Also, more ball speed when there's less loft on a golf club. Um, I might have swung a little faster, but I think I remember you mentioned that 152 smash factor. Right. That kind of jumped up at us there. The last one I hit slightly toey. It was still 149, which, you know. Yeah. Four foreign, pretty good. Keep in mind, these don't have limitations like the driver does. The driver always has like ball speed limitations. That's why 15 is usually mm -hmm. as high as you can get. So. Right, yeah, you mentioned this last one. You hit a 149 smash with, you know, off the toe, essentially, as you said. So yep. speaks to the forgiveness of the club, right? And, you know, the smash factor did increase from 1.5 average to 1.51 average. Okay. And uh, your ball speed also jumped up uh, four miles an hour. Club speed is also, you're swinging two miles an hour faster. Okay. Yep. So 
Uh, you're kind of warmed up a little bit now, but your efficiency also improved. So as it should with a, uh, with a lower loft there. So with that said, let's get to the other side okay. of the spectrum here. This might be a different uh, look at a dress for you. Three degrees extra of loft uh, total from 21 to 24, but let's see what we can do with that. We'll see if it looks more like kind of like a, a moon ball as opposed <laughs> to kind of a little lower ball flight or not. Maybe, yeah. it, maybe it just hit it really good too. So yeah. let's see. So Thomas, you've now adjusted that to the plus 1.5 setting. Do you notice that difference right away when you look at it? I do. I was right before hitting at the minus 1.5, so going from 21 to 24, three degrees more loft. Definitely looks like the ball may fly a little higher for me. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, this definitely looks like there's more loft on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now what would you expect? I assume it's going to be you know, higher launch, higher spin, and maybe not as far you know, down the fairway or down the driving range here. Yeah, pretty much a little more spin is what I'd expect, a little higher ball flight. Maybe not quite as hot off the club face per mm -hmm. se, maybe a little bit less ball speed. Um, kind of see, I think the carry distance might still stay up there because I always talk about carry distance being mm -hmm. important for with players that need a little help. Um, so carry distance when for a player that's looking for a utility iron or having a little more loft on it might not be a bad option there yeah. as well. So. For sure, and especially like you talk about as well when it's wet conditions. Yep. Uh, you know, your, the rollout and tr that TrackMan gives us might not be as accurate out on the course. And, you know, today is a great example. It's super wet. We've had a ton of rain, very humid out here. So that rollout that you're seeing on TrackMan might not be, uh, you know, might not play out on the course in this condition. Yeah, that's the really important thing to kind of touch on with this club is the adjustability is awesome. The different loft ranges is awesome. If you're looking for a club that's going to really chase out there and be kind of like you're playing on firmer conditions, imagine you're playing in Europe, for example, and yeah. the ground's really, really firm. Hitting a two iron down to like that, was it, what was Six, it 16, 16 degrees? 16 degrees, yeah. It's going to be a low chaser. It's mm -hmm. going to have no spin on it. It's going to go real, really far. Right. But if you need stopping power, that thing's going to be a little trouble. Right, so, so. exactly. Yeah. Well, speaking of stopping power, here's the highest lofted setting for the King, Cobra King utility, so let's see what see what we can do here. Okay. Oh yeah, I mean that might be the best one right there. That was nice. Yeah, that was really good. That's Notice right for me, about on the center line. <laughs> I was actually hitting a little straighter with this one. It just seemed like it was yeah, flying it a little straighter. Yeah, it did seem like that. Yep. Oh, I'm going to check the dispersion map here to confirm that. But there might be one little left. The other one seemed yeah. like a little straighter. I mean, in terms of the average, you're right on the middle there. It's yep. kind of circling around that center line. Uh, so that's, I mean, the straightest one, I would probably agree, based on the dispersion map here. Um, let's look at the numbers here. All right, Thomas, you hit 15 shots, five with each of the three different settings that we tested. Um, what are you finding as a fitter from the results? I thought it was very interesting that my predictions were very accurate with regards to spin. Yeah. The less loft on a golf club, the less spin. Um, and also, the less loft on a golf club, the more ball speed you get. Mm -hmm. So we were getting a little more ball speed when I had it in that 21 degree setting. In the 24 degree setting, we got a little less ball speed, didn't go quite as far. Mm -hmm. So kind of interesting across the board there. Well, the other thing I found really interesting too is the more loft on the golf club, the straighter I actually hit it. So if I'm looking at my dispersion screen here on, on the left side here, I mean, you notice the red circle I'm looking at was a little bit to the left. Now it was a little, maybe a little more consistent. It was a little more of a draw bias essentially. Um, but you'll notice the other ones on average were going a little, a little bit straighter. Yeah. I'm looking at the one, the purple circle, for example, the 24 degree setting, I had one that I pulled to the left, but then I had four that were very, very close in, to the center. Of the, yeah. Um, yeah, so a little more loft on the golf club made it a little easier for me to hit. I feel like I maybe could control the ball a little bit, little bit better. So. Based on this test today, what would you say are the advantages to a golfer, really of any skill level, um, getting an adjustable hosel with their utility iron and using that on the course, using that in their bag? Well, adjustability to help fill your gap, fill your gap in your bag. Every degree of loft, I always like to say, is about three to four yards. Mm -hmm. um, so you can adjust this one and a half degrees. So you can de definitely try and adjust gapping in your bag a little bit easier. Right. The other thing I like about the Cobra MyFly setting adjustability is the upright setting. Now, mm -hmm. I didn't do that today because, one, I was already hitting the ball left. <laughs> so I, I didn't want to hit it any further left. But if you adjust a club a little more upright, it makes it a little bit more draw bias. 
little easier to get that okay. thing to rotate right to left. So if there was a golfer that struggled maybe missing the ball to the right, which is what I struggle with, uh, if I were to hit this club, the, the upright setting might be advantageous for someone like me. Yeah, a little more bias. Yep. Yeah, a little, okay. just a little bit more bias essentially, get the ball going a little left. Perfect. Well, yep. we've seen the results, we've seen the test, we've seen how well the Cobra King Utility can perform for you. So golfers out there, if you're interested in the utility iron with the adjustable settings, like the Cobra King Utility, you can stop into a second swing store, you can talk to one of our certified master fitters over the phone, or you can visit secondswing.com, get one in your bag, start shooting some lower scores. Thomas, thank you for hitting the shots today and breaking down the data. Not a problem.